When the first footage and announcements for A Link Between Worlds dropped, I was skeptical. Link to the Past was a generation-defining title. On the lists of the best Super Nintendo games, it gets underlined twice. You remember where you were the first time you played it because it made that much of an impression. For the record, I was in my cousin Dean's living room, slack-jawed at the awesomeness. Now Nintendo wants to go back over that sacred incarnation of Hyrule? Needless to say, I had my reservations. Now, I don't. I am reservationless. I am that schmo who rolls in unannounced and tries to slip the maitre d' of 50, hoping to get more of this. I want more. Another game, another time, same high roll, but another Link on the chain. This time there's no uncle to go off and die, instead Link's the blacksmith's apprentice. He's not very good at it either, as he's always oversleeping and having horrible nightmares of some golden triangles or whatever. While Link's minding his business and making a delivery, some jerk causes a ruckus at the sanctuary, eventually too deifying the priestess there and making off with her like some very lost Owser wannabe. After having a jaw session with the princess, who's probably going to get kidnapped soon, I'm just saying, you head to one side of the world, talk to the elder who might be the same dude from Link to the Past, and then head to the opposite side of the world to infiltrate a very familiar looking palace with very familiar looking timing. Yes, it seems just like its predecessor, but there are plenty of wrinkles to differentiate the two. For instance, the much hyped ability to 2 deify yourself, turning you into the Hylian equivalent of a fathead's decal, gives you a restrictive yet liberating movement ability along walls. Since you're three nanometers thick, you can slip between prison bars, thin slats, and cracks in walls, and most importantly, the fractures in time space which serve as this Hyrule's answer to those creepy warp tiles. You end up at the same coordinates, but on the other side of reality, which might lead to some interesting consequences. Or more likely, it'll add yet another facet to the kind of puzzle-solving and top-down strategery that made the original Link to the Past so darn fun. Now with walking along walls. There's also this jerk, who's hijacked your own home, done horrible things to the furniture, and now rents you the exact same spoils you'd expect to dig up in dungeons. On the one hand, it's a way to tackle dungeons in an order of your choosing and break up the linearity a bit. On the other, it just means that each dungeon becomes a matter of finding the right item before you go in. Or just rent everything on the cheap and if you get game overed, while well, you're out of fat stack of cash. Fortunately, there's a bunch of new and interesting ways to make those rupees back from dodging cuckoos for cash to, and I can't believe this is a real thing, but it is and it's awesome, Octorok Home Run Derby. Hells yes. All right, so a couple of the mechanics are weird and the whole thing has a much more money intensive bent, but the sound, the effects, the whole ambiance of the game are such that if you love Link to the Past, you'll be right at home. The embellishments to the soundtrack specifically maintain the same basic rhythms and harmonies you're familiar with, but with a new richness that clearly indicates this is 2013, not 1992. I could sit here and listen to this all day, but I'd rather play it on the extra bonus double difficulty that it unlocks once you've cleared the game, as that might make the challenge on the second pass through just enough to engage without being ridiculous. Because let's face it, the first run will be smooth sailing to any fan of the series. I'd say wish me luck, but rather I should be wishing you luck because you're the ones who are already downloading this right now and playing it, right? Right? You should be.